Hey, so I made this Arduino PCAP library, which you can use for the ESP8266 and ESP32. So it can create and save PCAP files and send it over serial. More to on that later. But PCAP files are these things Wireshark uses. Uh, that's just Wireshark's uh, file format, so um, which is used for sniffing and yeah. So the ESP32 and ESP8266, they have this promiscuous mode where they can passively scan for all packets. And yeah, I thought, why not view this packets in Wireshark so I can see what packets can the ESP get because maybe it drops some packets and I just want to know what are the limits of the sniffer, um, which is implemented in the SDK for these chips. So I made this little library and it will save PCAP files onto an SD card or send it over serial. So when you install that, um, you can go to examples, Arduino PCAP, and there you have four examples, um, both for SD card and serial and for the ESP32 and for the ESP8266. So the SD um, example will of course save the PCAP files onto an SD card and that's every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds it will save a new file onto the SD card. Um, and the serial thing is way more interesting, I think, because that way you will not save it onto a SD card, but send it over serial live. And that works really good. So when you uh, flash that to the ESP, I just did that. And then I'm gonna switch to my Kali VM here because it's, it's not running on Windows yet. Uh, I don't see any reason to port it because it's just a proof of concept. Um, and if you're into this stuff, you want to use a Linux VM anyway for this kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, so we're gonna start the script. There's a script included in the project, and yeah. So you have you have your ESP32 flashed and connected to the PC. Oh wait, I gotta check if it's connected. Uh, USB. Yeah. So now it's connected to my VM. So it will ask you a few questions. Serial port, yeah, I know it's the default one. The baud rate uh, also is the default one. And yeah, I want to save it to capture PCAP. So serial is connected. That's great. I just gonna hit the restart button on the um, ESP. And stream started, starting up Wireshark. So what it does, it saves it now to this capture.pcap and it will also uh, start Wireshark which will read from this file. So there you have it. All the Wi-Fi frames in the air. So yeah, I, I, I saw that um, some beacon frames are malformed. I don't know why. Uh, some other aren't. It's weird. But yeah, it's a proof of concept. And here you can see all the stuff in Wireshark live. That's really cool. Um, as I said, you can connect an SD card reader to the ESP and save it onto your SD card as well. Um, it will save, um, it will create this PCAP files. You can copy to your PC and then open in Wireshark. Oh, that's not Wireshark. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, it's really simple. So you have to install this library and you're gonna need to install the Arduino time library. Um, it's just because the PCAP files need a timestamp and this library just yeah makes your life easier. Once you have that installed and of course the SDK for your ESP you wanna use, um, you just need the Python, Wireshark and PySerial for your Linux. Um, and that's basically it. Okay, if you don't use the ESP32, you need the SD third library as well, just because the ESP32 has an SD card library in its SDK included, and it's great, can use that. But for the ESP8266, um, yeah, we don't have that, and the standard Arduino SD card library is kind of not good. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is just an advanced library, so no problem using that. Um, and that's basically it. And then you can, as I showed, just connect it 
and see it live. So yeah, cool little proof of concept. Um, you can port it to other Arduinos as well, maybe to see, I don't know, Bluetooth traffic or 2.4 gigahertz traffic or other things. I don't know which Arduino devices have some monitor or promiscuous mode as well, but if you have something, you can easily port it to that as well. And yeah, so you can use this with the ESP8266 as well, but it will give you a lot of um, nonsense packets. I don't know why the promiscuous mode there is just not not as good as on the 32, because on the 32, as you can, as you have seen, um, except of a few malformed packets, it's very good. You can use it perfectly. You can also see handshake packets, for example and stuff like that so that's really cool and yeah i hope a lot of cool projects will evolve from this little library and yeah